The next session I'm going to teach on is a spirit of pride. And as I go into pride, I'm also going to go into a spirit of attention because pride and attention are a lot of times tied together. Pride is really a very easy, identical spirit. You can really see it on the outside of persons. It's very easy to um, tell if they're walking in pride, if they're displaying pride. You don't really have to discern deeply into that. Pride also comes with arrogance and self-confidence instead of God confidence. Lucifer took his eyes off of everything and focused on himself. When we take our focus off of others and onto ourselves is when we get in trouble. People can see pride on you, and a lot of people don't want to be around a prideful person. Prideful people have a tendency to always talk about themselves. They think that they are better than others. They are seldom wanting to put their opinions and their beliefs and budge or move them because pride prevents them from seeing that they could be wrong. Pride is a ministry killer and a relationship stealer. People in pride often agree with everything you say because they don't want to acknowledge that they have a question or that they don't know. And so people with pride will also be, yep, uh-huh, yes, uh-huh, and because they're acting like they know it all. But what about you? Do you sit and talk about pride? Do you acknowledge it or do you say that you don't have it? When you talk, do you notice I, I, I at the beginning of your sentence? Do you try and sound superior? Do you have to butt in to a conversation? Do you have to make your opinion known? A lot of us that have experienced pride are so bound in pride that we don't realize that we even have pride. Pride is self-focused. Are you self-focused or are you people-focused? When you're sitting down to talk to someone in a coffee shop, meeting a new person, are you trying to tell them all about you and explain what you do and who you are? Or do you continually ask them questions about them? Who are you? What are you doing? Prideful people want to promote themselves and bring the conversation back on themselves instead of being invested in caring about and who another person is. We all have a level of pride. To dismiss this would be a lie. Perhaps it's in the clothes you wear, the home you live, or the career you hold. Pride is a natural part of who we are. It's when we take these things that we're proud in and display it and use it to exalt ourselves is when we get in trouble. God gives us nice homes for entertaining, for advancing the kingdom. He gives us nice things to bless others with. And it's when we use it for the glorification of Jesus Christ's name that we can exalt him instead of exalt ourselves. Most of you know I wear a ring on every finger. Years ago, that would have been a spirit of pride, saying, look at me, I have all these rings. Now I give away more rings than I wear. And so I use it for the glorification of God's name to show someone that feels unworthy that they're a daughter, that they're a princess to God. And so we have to balance out maybe something that we were like in the secular world to how can I use it to glorify God's kingdom. My husband gave me a necklace once and we weren't even totally out of the jewelry store and he said, enjoy it while you have it. Because he knew I'd be giving it away. I haven't yet, but I would if God said. So what we need to do is make sure that we're balanced in our life. There's a balance in taking care of our house and keeping it clean and repairing it. Our houses are a gift from the Lord, but when we become obsessed of it because we're worried and we're fearful of what someone's going to say if they see a piece of dust or something out of place, that's when it comes a spirit of pride. And when we have a spirit of pride, we have an idle spirit because we're idolizing something, whether ourself, whether our home, whether our car, we're idolizing it. Pride got the best of Satan. Satan turned his thoughts from God to himself and pride took hold. Maybe you have pride about, I'm better than you. I'm more knowledgeable in the gospel than you. I've been given more opportunities than you. These are some thoughts that Christians let in their mind. Thoughts of, I could have done my sermon better than my pastor. I could have written that book better. 
Those are thoughts that we can't allow to capture us. Those are prideful thoughts. We shouldn't even be saying those things, but what we should be doing is capturing them, smashing them down, and dismissing them. And that's what we have to do sometimes with pride. We have to take that thought captive, acknowledge that God has given us all things, God has given people all things, and that we're to walk what? Humbly with our God. And so we have to smash those thoughts down and dismiss them. So why? So they don't get planted, rooted in us, and grow into something that we can't get rid of us. Pride changes our thinking process. When a person is consumed with pride, the words that the person speaks is often not heard the same as who they speak it to. So I want you to think about this. If I say to you, if you have so much pride, I could say to you, I'm going to the store to buy a jar of jelly, and you're going to hear, I'm ordering a pizza. Think about the times that someone has said, I didn't say that. That's not what you said. Pride twists and turns communication so the way you say it is not the way the hearer receives it. Pride, perhaps in a spousal relationship, says, you went to the store and you forgot my coffee. Pride to that person says that you forgot their coffee. You didn't care enough about me. My needs weren't important to you. I should have come ahead of you. You forgot my coffee, but yet you got what you needed. That can be a spirit of pride, and it can put in a root of offense. Because someone that's dealt with like offense and pride and rejection, when you forget something of theirs, to them, since they're so self-focused, what they wanted was more important than what you really needed. So we have to look at that. We have to look at those times that maybe you've argued with someone, Maybe you said something with pure intentions, but they received it in a different way. They're operating in a spirit of pride, and they're not truly hearing what you have to say. Pride coupled with anger and rejection can damage relationships. Think about the times you've had conversations with those people that have offense, pride, rejection, and anger. We want to expose the enemy when it comes to the spirit of pride because as we expose the enemy and his tactics, we can all maybe identify it in ourselves or in other people and walk out of it. People who experience pride are often unteachable. They think that they know it all. Their spirit of superiority prevents them from being taught by others, receiving instruction, direction, and correction. They don't like receiving correction. They don't like being told they were wrong or they did that wrong because in their perception, they did everything right and they know it all. That's what we have to realize. So you have to also ask yourself, am I teachable? Can I receive correction? Can I receive direction without offense, without getting mad, without getting irritated at the person and without getting frustrated? See, when you have pride, sometimes when people offer you that correction, that direction, you feel like they're out to get you. You feel like, why are you picking on me again? The challenge is they're so bound with the demonic spirit that they don't even realize it and they don't know how to get free from it. Another way that pride says, you're better than this. You're better than them. They are wrong or they're lying to you. That's what pride says. We need to be able to identify the thoughts in our mind that we're hearing. And in my book, Who is Speaking?, I've given specific examples of how do we identify the thoughts that we're hearing and know the source that they're from. A person in pride thinks their thoughts are a normal thought process. They're not even aware that their thoughts are out of sync. They dismiss what you say, thinking they're better than the other. A spirit of pride walks into a room and right away they feel superior to those in the room. Why aren't you looking at me? Why aren't you asking me? 
you're talking to someone else, I'm walking in here, you should stop your conversation and start talking to me. Spirits of pride don't want to ask for help. Now, men, I'm going to pick on you for a minute. Think about when you don't want to ask for directions of where you're going. You're embarrassed to stop at a gas station and ask for directions. That is a spirit of pride. Well, I can figure it out. I can do it on my own. Why? Just go in the gas station. Save me an hour on the trip. You know, whatever it is. And so that's what you got to think about. We can't not ask because we don't want to admit our faults. Spirits of pride interrupt other people on purpose because they want to draw that conversation back to themselves. They will interrupt conversations, feel superior, put things out there so that the whole crowd will come back over them. What about when you're talking around someone in a normal voice and someone new comes up? All of a sudden you start talking louder because you want that person to see that you're superior or all-knowing or all that or that you've arrived. Now, pride can even manifest in our relationship with a father. Not obeying God when he gives you an instruction because you think your ways are better than God's ways. That's what we do. God gives you an instruction or maybe God has given you a ministry and you want to take the ball and roll with it. Well, God, how about I start doing this? God, how about I do this? God, let's do it this way. Why? Because you're saying, God, I don't want to wait. I don't want your will to be done. I don't want to be patient. I just want to take and manifest what I know is mine. That is a spirit of pride because now you're comparing yourself and thinking that you are better than God. What about when you're praying for someone and they get healed? Are you pointing it back to God? Are you glorifying the name of Jesus Christ? Are you saying, I healed someone? Recently, someone said, I know you're a healer. And I said, I'm not a healer. Jesus Christ is a healer. I couldn't heal or fly if I tried. But through Christ, I can do anything. And so always pointing it back to Christ. But often in conversations, you'll hear, I healed this person or I delivered this person. You didn't deliver anyone. Jesus Christ did, and we need to get it balanced. Prideful people often get irritated by others. Irritation is a spirit that accompanies pride. They have little tolerance for people with ignorance because they perceive that other people are ignorant because they're prideful and they're all-knowing. They don't know how to extend grace, acceptance, and forgiveness. They think their problems are worse and more important than anyone else's, and that when there's a crisis, their problems should be dealt with first. Prideful people talk just to get attention. They talk because they figure what they have to say is more important than what anyone else is saying or feeling. Prideful people walk into a room and suck all the air out of it. Then when they walk in, they're demanding attention, and you can tell they're carrying that pride. They have an independent spirit. They don't need help from God or man. A prayerlessness life. They lack in their prayer life, believing they don't need God's help. It might not be a conscious thing, that, but subconsciously, they have prayerlessness in life. I, I can do it on my own. I can do this. I don't need to pray about things. I feel I'm getting revelation from God when it's thinking their own thoughts. They're snobbish. They're selective of friends. They have a failure to admit mistakes. They rebel against authority. They demand special treatment. They have an unteachable spirit, thinking they have arrived, and exaggeration, appearing more than they are. Attention couples in with pride, and they're saying, look at me, or feel sorry for me. And I'm going to give you a couple of common examples of how that attention can go in with pride. Say an adult has pain. An adult will manifest attention, not necessarily by the words they speak out of their mouth, but they'll walk in a room and they'll be like, oh, my arm hurts. And what they're saying is, ask me what's wrong. Or they'll be just going like this. 
And what inside they're thinking is, don't you see I'm grabbing my arm? Won't you ask me what's wrong? Okay? A child does the same thing. You know, a child's like, oh, you know. They have a countenance change. A person will come into a room meeting church with a sad or depressed look on their face. They do have a problem, but instead of coming out and saying, can you pray for me, something is attacking me, they go around moping, okay, until someone says, oh, what's wrong? Don't give in to them. You're just feeding and enabling the spirit of attention. Just ignore them, okay? Just ignore them. They'll speak words to get your attention. They'll say things that'll shock and awe you, make you curious, or take the attention off whatever your focus is for the moment. They have that sorrowful look in action. They act differently when new people are around. They'll make certain motions so you, you think, what are you doing? People are prideful in their worship. Look at people. If you have a check about how they're worshiping, it probably is merited. Okay? Not everyone that raises their hand is worshiping the Lord. Some of the people are just doing it because everyone else is doing it. Some people worship, dance, do flags to say, look at me. All right? And so don't assume that every spiritual Christian that you see manifesting out the Holy Spirit is manifesting out the Holy Spirit. Some of it is just saying, look at me. I want to be all that. To overcome pride, we must put on humility, and humility does not come naturally. Humility is putting others before ourselves, pointing it back to cross, getting in our word, prayer, and worship, and recognizing that everything that we have and everything we do is from God. When I met my apostle years ago, the first thing I said to him is I said, you're a holy man of God. And he said, no, I'm a humble man of God. You see, there's a difference between holy and humble. Holy is saying, yes, I am holy. In, in essence, I am all that. Humble is saying, I recognize what you are feeling is the spirit of the Lord within me and giving me the credit to God. And we have to walk as humble people. Even though we want to be holy and pure, we want to be humble and acknowledge that Christ has come and refined us and defined us. I think sometimes we get mixed up on pride and humility when we receive a compliment or a gift. You know, if someone says, you ministered well, I give glory to Christ. God's given me these gifts. Always point it back to Christ. And we just, you know... Thanks, but the Lord gave me that gift. If you're a musician, you know, pull it back to the Lord instead of saying, oh, thanks, I did a great job today, didn't I? You know, we don't want to be doing that. And, you know, I think a lot of times, too, we just got to just simply acknowledge, hey, Kathy, you know, thanks, you did a great school today. Thank you. Just a simple acknowledgement. That's like, thanks, I worked really hard on that. You know, we got to just be careful that, I couldn't do anything without, you know, Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the one that gave me all this impartation. And too often we think, I did it. You know, oh, I studied, or oh, I did this, or oh, I did that, okay? Nobody has arrived. Nobody has arrived. We all fall short, okay? And we all need to work on getting rid of whatever allows pride to take hold in us. And what we really need to do is we need to allow the Holy Spirit to move.